James, I wake up like last weekend and it is starting to get beautiful here in Pittsburgh. So spring morning, perfect temperature. You look outside out of the front of our house and like sunrise, you can see it coming over the hills. And so I'm having one of these mornings where I just like, wow, it's so pretty out there. Like I'm going to go tell Sydney and I'm going to bring her over to the window so we can kind of look out there together. And so we go over to our windows and our windows are, if you've ever been in a room where like they have the kind of the high windows. So I, I'm six foot plus. I easily can see out. I just, whatever. I take it for granted. She's like on her tippy toes. I was joking that I had to like lift her up to see out, out the window. <laughs> but, you know, we're like taking it all in. And then for some reason, my vision just zooms in on our flower bed right outside our front door. And I'm like, oh, crap. I did not want to tell Sydney what I saw. So I kind of like, <laughs> I kind of like, oh, just, yeah, beautiful sun, sunrise. And then we like moved on. And I went around the house to confirm that what I saw was actually real. A couple of days before, we had planted a like brand new flowers, tulips, got mulch from Home Depot, the whole deal. We have deer in our neighborhood. And I did not know that deer view tulips as a buffet of sorts. <laughs> <laughs> and I went for my long run while Sydney planted the tulips because she kind of like that was going to be her thing. I mean, when I tell you that literally $150 plus of flowers gone in oh an instant gosh. because the deer ate every single one of our tulips in our front yard. Um, it was heartbreaking for Sydney. So uh, thoughts and prayers. <laughs> but uh, poor the, Sydney, she put in so much work. I know she was. She was like sore the next few days because she's like you know constantly bending over to like plant all these things, and then all of her work is just gone. And the, the flower bed was bare before, and then we put tulips in, so it like looked good for a couple days, and now it just looks completely bare again. And uh, oh. we're starting from ground zero. When you move to a new city, you should look up uh, what you should plant. Or there are neighbors of ours that have tulips, but they bought like a spray, or there's all these different hacks online to get deer not to eat them. We'll never make that mistake again, man. But uh, anyway, that, man. Was, that was my weekend. <laughs> Man, <laughs> interesting weekend. Story Very time with nice. Benji. Success on this episode. <laughs> That's right. What are we talking about today, James? All right. So you actually brought this one to the table. It's a post from, I might botch this guy's name. His name, it looks like Jasmine Alik, J-A-S-M-I-N-A-L-I-C with that little dash thing over the C. Um, and so he... Uh, he, it's an, it's another carousel that's becoming a trend here on B2B growth for us to find carousels that have, that have <laughs> popped off, but, uh, it's seven coolest copywriting tricks ever. Uh, and so I actually, uh, one of my hot takes on this was that I actually don't love the headline for it. Um, this, this post went bananas. I mean, 5,375 reactions, 1100, over 1100 comments, 567 reposts. But the, the title is just kind of blah to me, it, particularly because it's about copywriting and the headline, in my opinion, isn't that good, but what the heck do I know? Uh, clearly <laughs> he, uh, he got a lot, he, he does have the repost graphic on the opening slide, which I think was interesting. Um, but, uh, but the content was really good. And so it speaks to like, when you've got substance to your content kind of flies in the face of whole of the whole, like if your headline sucks and nobody's going to listen, you know, watch it, but cool just seems like a really weak descriptor for how good this content is. Um, so my, my, my big takeaways from this uh, you know, the, the two, the two different kind of tips that I'll call out, uh, are the first one slide five and six. So, uh, write your last sentence first. And so he's got a post here. It says, do this with a little arrow, watch your writing transform, take the last line of every post, write it first reason. We often leave the power statement last by leading versus ending with it everything changes. Your hook plus entire post become more powerful. Have you tried writing backwards before? And then he shows it visually how that have you tried writing backwards before was his initial first line and how now his 
first line is do this, watch your writing transform. And just by switching it, it makes a lot of sense to me. I, I remember when I was when I was really pumping out, you know, content on LinkedIn back in 2017, 2018, I would actually intentionally try to have a really, really strong closing line. And it makes a lot of sense now that, you know, we we know kind of the art of hook and 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 the the importance of hooking someone at the beginning. Uh, it would make sense to to spend all of that time on the front of the post as opposed to, you know, having a really pithy, compelling, you know, closing. That's um, the power of Descript for micro videos is people tend to do this with the way they talk as well. They close really strong because they finally got their idea out. And when you're editing a micro video, you can just pull the last line. And yeah. when you're looking at the transcription, just take the most powerful line in front load it right at the beginning. So this is, yeah. it's actually been backwards for me because I'm not the greatest copywriter, but as I saw it in transcriptions play out, I started putting that line first, then it's made my writing better in turn nice. because I'm noticing that that's how, just how it works and you're seeing it transcribed. So I, I, I saw this to be true in micro video form as well. B2B brands are on a hamster wheel trying to create more and more awareness. They're putting so much work into creating awareness and not nearly enough work into making sure that the content they're putting out is actually good. You can pay to build awareness. Brands do that all the time. But does the content resonate? The question should be, how do we create content that builds affinity? And that's where Sweetfish comes in. We're here to help you build your market's favorite show, not just another show. Learn more at sweetfishmedia.com. Which, uh, which, which one of these stood out to you? So I had two. One of them was, uh, it was number four, but uh, what slide is that? That would be slide 11. Replace adverbs with definitive verbs. And so he goes, you know, adverbs are good, but descriptions are better. So some weak examples would be, he carefully held the baby. She quickly ran from the scene. He flips it to, he cradled the baby. She sprinted from the scene or they loved each other, right? Like, so you, you take, um, you basically just make the statement as powerful and, uh, um, impactful as possible. Again, when you're communicating, this is where it's not been in copywriting for me. It's been more in recording these episodes with you, James, or just looking at micro videos. You see how many words we typically use that maybe we don't really need to. Like in the sentence I just said, I said, maybe we don't really need to. If I was editing this into a micro video, I would take out maybe because you got to get straight to, we don't need to do that. And there's a lot more power in communicating, especially on LinkedIn when you're writing text to tell people what they should do or how they should think or what you've learned. And instead of kind of dancing around it. And I, I, so I really, really liked that one. Uh, the, the other one I wanted to call out was turning call to action to call to value. So I'm going in backwards order here. This was actually tip three on slide nine. I think you and I hit on this one quite a bit without having language for it. But you, instead of just saying this is what you should do, even if you, I'll just give an example. Our YouTube segment that we're going to do at the end of this episode. What we're doing is we're adding value to the audience by saying, go subscribe to this YouTube channel that James and I really love. And hey, while you're there, then head over to B2B Growth and subscribe to our channel. Why? Because the call to action is we really would love for you to go to our YouTube channel and subscribe to our YouTube channel. But we also know we're just starting out and you're listening to our podcast. So you're not going to feel like you really need to also go find us on YouTube. So we need to give you extra value. And if we call you to value, then maybe you also take the action. So I like that a lot because when people get to the end of their LinkedIn copywriting, usually they're just like, ah, well, now I just need to throw in the, the call to action instead of thinking, how can I add value here in a way that will get the result I want, but also is, is helping the person reading this. Yeah. Yep. My, my second tip from this one, he calls it dear son, love dad. He says it's the best writing technique ever. He said, my super secret copywriting hack. Every time I write anything, I start with dear son and end with love dad. After I'm done, I just delete those two parts. He says, when you write to only one person, it's easier. When you write to your favorite person, it's faster. 
good for LinkedIn posts, emails, or anything really? Who's the one person you write to? And uh, so I thought thought this was really interesting. Um, I actually have a podcast specifically for my grandkids. So uh, it, it used to be called the Crockpot. Now I call it, uh, I think we renamed it How Grandpa Built It because a buddy of mine uh, has a similar podcast. But it's basically like, a, a podcast for our grandkids. So opening every episode, I'm like, Hey, grandkids. Uh, and I'm talking about JJ as their father and, you know, talking about Lisa as their grandma, just really interesting, but it does put you in a different frame whenever you have a very specific, you know, person or people in mind that you're talking to. I like that. He, he actually calls out a specific person, like make it singular one person that you're talking to. And when it's your favorite person, uh, you're going to write more naturally. I think that's something that has been kind of beat to death. And and I think we all know that we need to be writing like humans and not robots. It's still shocking to me that I still see posts from time to time that have very little engagement. A lot of times they're, you know, from, from folks that have not been on, you know, creating content on LinkedIn for very long because they haven't realized that, uh, you know, when you write, like you're writing a dissertation in college or a, paper in your, for your high school English class. It just doesn't resonate with humans. But um, so we won't belabor that point. But a uh, lot, lot of really good takes here from this deck. Make sure to go follow uh, Jasmine Alik. Uh, check out this deck. Uh, again, it is, what's it, what was it called? I didn't love the name. Seven, Seven coolest, coolest copywriting tricks ever. Seven coolest copywriting tricks ever. I just am looking at the comments here. It looks like He's got uh, a newsletter called Write Better One Email at a Time. So if you go to the comments of that post, and we'll link up this post in the in the description here. So if you want to, we've had a few uh, few folks reach out to us and ask us for links to the posts. So we'll we'll start to put that in the in the description. But sign up for his newsletter. Uh, he's a Fortune 500 copywriter. Clearly, uh, clearly knows what he's doing, uh, and uh, hopefully, yeah, hopefully, hopefully these little tips were were helpful for you. So we're getting into our YouTube segment. You're up for, uh, for your, your favorite YouTube, uh, channel that you're, that you're binging these days. Uh, Benji, what do you got? All right. So this one is a little bit of a cop out, James. I'm not going to lie. Daily stoic. I bet a good chunk of our audience already knows Ryan holiday, but he's, getting better and better. I want to call out his micro content and his shorts specifically. He takes a very unique natural approach. If you ever see a B2B growth episode where a influencer or like uh, the edit on a clip I did of Dave Gerhardt, Dave Gerhardt was like right in the front. I totally stole that from Ryan holiday <laughs> and I know other people do it, but I really like the way uh, he's just doubled down on shorts content He's also someone to watch in the the realm of he attached his content to a daily format. So he has daily dad. He has daily stoic. These ideas that you can consume this type of content every day. It's going to make you a better person. It's stoicism for everyday life. So I'm also really into like core values and ancient wisdom. And, and so he just, that's, that's the waters that he swims in. He's also a former marketer. So he's someone worth following because he thinks this way, but he has over a million subscribers. So you will be very late to the party if you've never heard of him. He has 630 plus videos, multiple New York Times bestselling books. And fun fact, he lived like 40 minutes away from me in Austin. He started a bookstore and it's he just created a new podcast studio worth checking out. Fantastic book recommendations. Can't say enough good things. James, that's my plug for today. Daily Stoic and Ryan Holiday. I love it. I love it. All right. That's it for today's episode of B2B Growth.